So, self-inquiry. Self-inquiry is something that my, um, I was um, introduced to by meeting a, my, one of my spiritual teachers, Muji, who uh, is of the lineage of Ramana Maharishi, with this guy at the back with the white beard on. Uh, that was Ramana. Probably symbolically my great-great-grandfather and, uh, and uh, in spiritual symbology, not, not in literal, not literally. <laughs> It would be lovely if he was my grandfather as well. That would have been auspicious, I guess. But um, anyway. Um, and, um, okay. So self-inquiry is, is related to A Course in Miracles, which is really the release of all... It's re well, it's really... It literally means the inquiry of what is the self. And of course, anyone who does spiritual work uh, or goes into some of the more advanced literature will know that there's the little self or the person or the bod body thought identification, which is the little self or the ego. And then there is, um, uh, you could say it's the, the big self. The big self, you know, is, I think... Um, I was like, you know, one of my favorite lines, I guess, that's in spiritual literature is, be still and know that I'm God. So then the, du the duality between a me and a God dissolves and there's only one experience left. And, that is, and that's the truth. So how, so how self-inquiry self is not an intellectual process. In fact, here's the first thing I'll start with. Um, is one is inquiring as to the nature of what is the truth right now and, and can one have recognition of the truth right now so here's the thing if um, like let's say um, if I hold up a a pen now a pen is observed to be an object. I call, I call a pen an object, it's a type of object and it, and it can be observed or it can be witnessed. So the pen is an object that is being witnessed. Now a pen, uh, here, here's something because I also am fr from a 12 step background, a pen is quite a neutral or a boring or a meaningless object. So it's relatively boring, neutral, meaning it doesn't matter which one of those you, you see. So with this type of object, when it's observed, it seems to be very, very clearly in the distance and is not the self. Like, I would not be saying here, I'm a pen. It's clear that there is observation of the pen, it's an object, but there would be no confusion in, in mistaking the pen for me. It's like there's clarity, there's detached observation of the pen, it's an object out there. Um, <clears throat> just on a side note, if one gets addicted with something, then the thing becomes very, very interesting or meaningful or special. Often then there can be confusion. It's like, you know, you could get people who are in a relationship and think the other person is part of them because they get so identified. It's no longer a distant thing that is not self. <clears throat> So that's a pen, and you know I, I'm not addicted to pens, so I'm not confused that I'm a pen. You know, uh, there's absolute clarity that there is observation of the pen. A pen is an object, whether it comes or goes, doesn't really matter. It's just a, something in the field of passing. And actually, here's the thing: is that anything that passes or changes is observed. Now, if you investigate this. If a cloud, if it's observed that a cloud is passing by and then disappears off, then actually one can never ever be the cloud. One was actually in truth the observer of the cloud, but one cannot be the cloud. So if anything, if there's any object that passes and then goes away or fluctuates or changes, it cannot be the observer, you see. Because obviously, if, if one was a cloud and it passed, then one wouldn't exist. 
So there has to be an observer that observes everything that can come and go and that passes. So if one is identifying with something as, as the, what I call the limited self that can change or fluctuate, then there must be an observer of that which is not that, you see. So, so I think everyone's in agreement that this is an object that's being observed. It's, no one's confused that they are a pen in this room. So, <laughs> okay, now we get to, to the, some of the things that uh, are, are, are more uh, closer. What about thoughts? And this can be like a practical thing for everyone, in, you know, that's listening. You know, if there are thoughts flitting by, are the thoughts, are these thoughts what one is? Or is there an observing of thoughts coming and going, which is not in the field of thoughts? Now, here's the thing which some people get stuck on, is they try and think about it. So, if you try and think about it, you're still using... It's like what Einstein said, you can't get to the next level by being stuck on the, the lower level. So, is there something observing all thoughts passing by, which is, not a, which is not in the field of thoughts? Now, if people are really addicted to their thoughts, they'll try and think about this. But actually, um, let go of the thinking. What's... Is there something here that is observing? Can you be that? So often people will, will, will have this thing of like, I'm the thoughts looking for an observer. And that, that also will not work. So if you let go of the fascination and interest of the passing thoughts, is there an observing or a witnessing that is not of thoughts that is experienced now? If so, then it's recognized that there is a self. The self, or the, the more truer self, is not a thought. And that... Um, now, here's the thing with thoughts. Lots of thoughts pass by, and they don't even stay, or they're not even noticed, or one is quite unaware of them. And that's because they're boring, or neutral, or meaningless. So like if I, one had the thought like the, um, the sky is grey and that flitted across the consciousness, it probably wouldn't even be noticed or hardly register. You know, if, if, it, if it was like something like, especially if there was a, what we call in the consciousness a interesting thought or an identified thought or a thought that one's addicted to or a special thought, then that seems to have some kind of sticking power. You know, and uh, you know the the more limitless presence is not recognized. But actually, for the purpose of this, they're all equally meaningless. Is there something now? If, explore in your own experiencing. Is there something experienced that is observing thoughts that is not thoughts? Is there a stillness, or is there an obse observation of these thoughts? Is one the observer? And the thoughts are actually not that important and they pass by or not, it's just irrelevant. Just like if there was a pen, there's no mistake. There's total clarity on that. Here's the next thing. What about, what about um, feelings? What about negative feelings like fear, anger, shame, overwhelm, um, desire? All of these feelings that, are, that arise, I call them the negative emotions or the ego emotions. If there is such an emotion here, present right now, or it could be a physical sensation in the body, like an ache or a pain or whatever it may be, if there are any of these sensations now, <clears throat> is there, you know, there was a time when that sensation wasn't here, like there was no fear here or there was no pain here or there was no overwhelm here or there was no desire here, or there was no ne negative feeling here. But now this feeling is here now, and at a certain point it will start to get less and less, it will disappear. So it's a, it's, it's a passing object. So th therefore, there is that which has observed this thing arise, now it might be quite loud, and then it will pass away. 
Is there awareness of a detached observing of this, which is not the thing, not the feeling? So that's another thing to investigate in self-inquiry. So, oh, thoughts are passing by, it's not important. There's witnessing of thoughts, but, you know, so what? There could be a, a feeling arising, but it's being witnessed. And again, it's like, so what? Now, another thing that can arise are images. Images can arise, but the same thing, images or memories may arise, but an, a memory or an image may arise or be constructed, and then it passes. So what is observing all images or all memories which is not an image or a memory? Because something must be observing it which is not the image or the memory. So again, uh, is there a detached observer of images and things? So you have, is there something observing the thoughts, the feelings? Now time. What about time? Well, generally speaking, Usually, I say, there's usually an unconscious tracking of time, elapsing. Like there's a little something in, in, the, in the subconscious, like counting how many seconds are passing by. But is there something here which is observing any tracking or interest in or the notion of even time? Is there something observing that? And is there a detached observer which is not interested in time, where time does not exist? And another one is like location. Now location and body. Body, body location and identification or feeling limited or constricted. Now, if there's any feeling of limitation or constriction, then this is like always shifting. I mean, there can be times when there's no limitation and there's times when there's a very contracted feeling. But then these fluctuations must be being observed. So is there something which is observing either limitation or expansiveness which is not limited or expansive that is here, that can be recognized uh, now. So depending on, and as you do the self-inquiry, it's like <clears throat> also things like um, exhaustion or tiredness or fatigue. These things are also um, there was a time when there's no fatigue, and then there's a bit of fatigue, and then there's exhaustion. And yet, something knows there's fluctuating shifts in all of this. So what's observing? What's observing something that's labelled as lots of energy, and now no energy, or exhaustion? Or even things like, um, what, whatever subtlety it could be. It could even be things like... Um, Interest or non-interest, attention or non-attention, what is witnessing all of these more subtle fields? So, and then you're, ex you're, you're starting to, you just see what, what's arising and see what's, is, is there a witnesser of that? Is there a detached witnesser of that? Be the detached witnessing and then see if, and if in the witnessing field there seems to be some experience of limitation, then what's witnessing or observing that experience of limitation? And then if you detach from that, and there's still a feeling of limitation, then there must be something that observes any form of limit. Whether the limit is thoughts, whether the limit is location of the body, whether the limit is time, whether the limit is an image. So is there something that is observing anything within the realm of limits or anything that in the realm of that which can come and go and change and pass. So one is now starting to, and it's an experience. Is there something here that is limitless, changeless, timeless, locationless? So that's the process of self-inquiry. <clears throat>